Hi, my Brainley Auctioneer. Our question today is, and we get this question quite frequently, how do we know that other bidder bidding against us is real? And I would submit you don't, especially online. But, you know, the bigger picture here, as I noted in a blog, uh, some time ago that, uh, do you know that's really orange roughy as you stare down at that fish? Do you know that car salesman's uh, price was indeed the best price he could give you? Uh, what do we know for sure? So um, it's not that surprising that we don't know for sure that that other bidder is real. We have sold things online for over 20 years. We're primarily live auctioneers, but we've sold online simulcast uh, all through that period of time. Especially here lately, we've noticed other bidders uh, registering for online auctions. Uh, we sell cars here in uh, Columbus, Ohio. Um, periodically, we uh, have been doing live auctions for those same entities and other similar entities for over 20 years. But with the pandemic, we've gone to exclusively online. And so the auction goes up and all of a sudden here's a bidder in Georgia. Here's a bidder in Texas. Here's a bidder in California. Here's a bidder in Florida. The cars are in Columbus, Ohio. Um, you're going to pay for the car. You're going to uh, be here two days later to pick up the car because you have to be here two days later to pick up the car. So we were a little bit suspicious early on, and rightly so, because most of our out-of-town bidders we would discover weren't real or weren't genuine. Um, not so much involving the auctioneer or the seller, but just people registering and they have no intention to pay. They have, <laughs> they essentially don't exist. You're never going to find them. You're never going to hold them to anything. Um, our last round here, we uh, emailed everybody that was out of state at Columbus for those unfamiliar Columbus, Ohio is more or less in the middle of our state here. So, um, you know, you're an hour and a half or so plus or minus uh, to get to a border. And uh, these cars aren't $10 million cars or $5 million cars or anything like that. These are, you know, some $500 cars and some two, three, four, or $5,000 cars and occasionally more, but uh, generally they're in that price range. And are there, are there cars like that in those markets as well? Could you find a $500 or $1,500 or $5,000 car in Florida or Texas or Arizona or California? Uh, you, you could, you could find it. And so what, what's special about ours? You're in Florida. Why are you bidding on our cars here in, in Ohio? Well, you, you're bidding on them for fun. You're just registering and you're just having some fun. I guess, I guess, I don't know how else to explain it. But more generally, if you're bidding in an online auction, how do you know that bidder that just outbid you is not um, a registered bidder that the auctioneer placed, that the seller might have placed? registered a uh, fake name or uh, registered his neighbor or got called a sister and said, Hey, you need to register at things. You know, it's not bringing enough. I need you to push the price a little bit. How do you know? How do you know? And, I, and I'm just here to tell you, you don't know. You do not know. And if you think, you know, uh, you better take a look again. Except um, when you start to see a pattern or start to see um, a consistent bidder always coming in second or um, always not quite being the high bidder. Um, and it's online, especially if it's an online auction. There's records and they can be subpoenaed and they can be uh, presented in court and they can be given to an expert witness like me. And I look down and I see this bidder registering and never winning, uh, coming close to never winning. Um, so I'm just here to tell any auction bidder that's ever attended an auction live, participated in a simulcast auction live and online at the same time and or online auction that your trust that that other bidder is a real bidder 
is equivalent to how much you can trust that auctioneer. That's not a guarantee. Some things are out of the auctioneer's control. I don't necessarily know when the seller's sister registers that she isn't interested in buying. I don't know that it's the seller's sister, quite frankly, let alone that what her true intent is. But generally speaking, if you can trust the auctioneer, talk to the auctioneer, talk to the online platform, say, you know, what, what precautions, what, what provisions are in place to eliminate people bidding without the genuine intent to purchase, but bidding for some other purpose. Now, of course, here in the United States, in with reserve auctions, the seller can bid, the auctioneer can bid for the seller, someone else can bid for the seller in order to get it up to the reserve. And that can be disclosed and it's all fine. I mean, I understand you don't like it, I don't like it either. But in an absolute auction, or when the auctioneer portrays it as selling absolute, uh, we other than out of, out of uh, forced sales and things like that, where the seller can bid. Absolute auctions, non-forced sales, generally speaking, the seller is not to bid and uh, no one's to bid on the seller's behalf. And fictitious bidding and whatnot has been litigated. It's gone all the way to the Supreme Court of the United States uh, in VCV Williams. In that case, uh, the Supreme Court said that you can't use fictitious bidders in an auction. You just can't uh, plug in fake people or register fake accounts and, and use that to push up. Uh, again, our question here today was, um, how do you know if that other bidder is real? And our answer here today is, uh, you don't, but to the extent that you can feel better about it, is the auctioneer trustworthy? Mike Brantley, auctioneer. Pleasure to be with you today. Other videos on this same page, others forthcoming. Have a great day and stay safe.